Hi, I'm Ian Griffiths, Engine Technical Fellow and Microsoft MVP. In this video, I'm going to show you how to write a custom Spark job in Scala and run it inside of an Azure Synapse Spark cluster. So to begin with, we're going to need to create the relevant resources in Azure. So I've come into the Azure portal and I'm typing in Azure Synapse in the new resource entry. And I want to select the workspaces preview because that's the one that's going to let me create things in Spark. So I'm going to set up a new resource group just for this, which I'm going to call Synapse Custom Spark Job, obviously enough. I'm also going to create the workspace, and this is the point of this. This is a new Azure Synapse workspace, and this is going to be the thing that will host the Spark environment that my custom job will run in. I'm going to create this in North Europe because that's a data center fairly near to me. I'm also going to create a new Azure Data Lake storage account just for this illustration. I'm going to give that a similar name to the workspace. And I'm going to create a file system inside of there because we're going to need one of those to hold the files that make up my custom job. So it's going to take a little while for Azure to create the resources. So while we're waiting for that to happen, I'm going to go and configure security on the newly created storage account so that I have the necessary permissions to upload the custom job once I've built the thing. So just to make this easier to access in the future, I'm going to add the new resource group to my dashboard so that, that way all these things will be right there each time I come back to the, the home page. So then I'm going to go into my storage account. I'm going to go into containers and in there I'm going to find the file system I asked it to create for me during the setup. And I'm going to select that and then go to the access control settings. I'm going to add a new role assignment here. And the role I'm going to add is the storage blob data contributor. And I'm going to add myself in this role so I will now have permission to upload data. So that's now done. So now all we need to do is use the magic of video editing to make the creation of the workspace happen a little bit faster. And there it is. So now my workspace is ready. I can open it up in the Azure portal. And if I click on this workspace web URL link, that will open the workspace for me. I'm just going to close the introductory screen here because I've got a job to do. To be able to run a Spark job, I'm going to need a Spark cluster setup. And by default, it doesn't actually create one of those for you. So I've got to go into this manage section and select Apache Spark pools and add a new pool. I'm going to create the smallest one it's going to let me create here. So I'm going to call it small. I'm going to disable auto scaling. I'm going to select the smallest VM size and then leave it at the lowest number of nodes. That's three nodes. I'm going to click create. And once this is done, I will have an Apache Spark pool ready for use. It won't start that until I try and do something with it. So it's just sitting there as a configuration setting right now. But as soon as I try and use that, it will automatically spin the thing up. And the default settings mean it will shut down after 15 minutes of inaction. So that means it won't cost me too much money if I forget about it. So now that we've got our Apache Spark pool, we need some code to upload. So let's go and build the custom job. So we need certain versions of Java and Scala to build a jar file that Synapse is going to be happy with. And you might not want to install those particular versions as the main ones on your system. So arguably the best way to do this is to use Docker. So I've got a folder here with a Docker file in it, and I'm going to open that up in Visual Studio Code. And as you can see, this is a pretty straightforward Docker file. I've asked for an image with Maven and the JDK version 8 install, which is the one that I'm going to need to work with Synapse. And I've also asked it to install the Scala build tools. So with this in place, I can use the Docker support that's built in to Visual Studio Code. So if I click 
on the little green icon at the bottom left, it gives me the option to connect to containers. So I'm going to open a folder, this folder, in fact, as a container-based workspace. And it's noticed there's a Docker file in here, and it's asking me, do I want to use that one or something else as the Docker file? And I'm going to choose the Docker file I've got. So when I select that, it starts up an instance of that image. And you can see here in the terminal window, I've got a prompt. So I'm able to start using the Scala build tools. I'm going to use the template for Hello World because I don't need anything very complicated here. So I'm just going to ask for the simplest Scala project I can possibly have. And I'm running inside my container here and it's done what I needed to. And it's asking me for a name. I'm going to call this Synapse Spark Scala. And you can see that's created a folder called Synapse Spark Scala. I'm going to go in there. And if we go and take a look at the build file, we can see it's selected the latest version of Scala for me. Now, actually, we don't want that because if you look at this web page here, which tells us which versions of various platforms and technologies are pre-installed in Synapse, you can see the version of Scala that's pre-installed is actually 2.11.12 which is slightly older than the one that the Scala build tools have created for me from the Hello World template. So I need to go back into my SPT file and change the version of Scala to match the one that's listed here on the web page. So instead of 2.13.1, we've got 2.11.12. And we don't actually need most of what's left in this generated file. We could set some properties, but actually we don't need them. The only remaining thing of interest is the library dependencies setting. And we don't need the particular stuff that's listed here in the default file, but I am going to need to add a reference to the Apache Spark components. So in particular, this code that I'm going to use will be using the Spark SQL support. So here I've asked it for a reference to the relevant version of that component. So now if I type SBT run, it's going to download all the various pieces it needs to build that. So it's going to make sure it's got the right versions of everything as determined by my SPT file. And then it's going to compile my project and then it is going to run. And you can see there it's displayed hello world because that's what the template I asked for gives me. So now let's go and take a look at the code. So this obviously is what the template provided. This isn't quite what I want to run inside of the Spark cluster. So I am going to paste in some code I wrote earlier. Now this is based on one of the standard samples from the Spark source code. This estimates pi's value using a uh, technique that happens to be runnable in Spark. Now you can see I'm using the Spark session type here. That's available because of the edits that I made to my SPT file. And it's using the Spark context objects parallelize operation to run an algorithm that will produce an approximation to pi. Obviously for this to work, I'm gonna to need to run it inside a Spark cluster. So I could type SPT run again. But if I do so, it's going to fail because when it tries to create this Spark session object, it's going to go looking for connection details and they're not going to be there. So if I run this, we're going to get an error. Now I could in principle set this up with an environment variable that points to a Spark cluster, at which point it might actually be able to work. But because I haven't done that, you can see that immediately after printing out hello world, we get an exception, which is exactly what I expect. So this is just failing because it can't find a Spark instance to talk to. It's saying a master URL must be set in your configuration. But that's fine because this is not where we're going to run this. Remember, the whole point of this exercise is to show how we can run custom code inside a Spark cluster hosted by Azure Synapse. So instead of running it, what we're actually going to do is build a package that we can upload to Azure Synapse. And once this is finished, you can see that it has created this jar file that is the output of the build process. And that's something I can upload into Azure Synapse. So back in my Azure Synapse workspace, what I've now got to do is upload that jar file into storage. So if I go into this storage tab and look at the linked accounts, I can see the storage account that I asked the Azure portal to create when setting up this workspace. And in here is the file system I asked it to create. So I'm going to go into there and create a new folder to hold 
the jar file that I just created. So let's rename that something more sensible. And now if I go into that, I can click the upload button and then go and find the file that we just built with the Scala tools. There it is. I'm going to click upload. Shouldn't take long because it's pretty small. And now I'm going to need the URL of that particular file. So let's copy that out of here with this copy ABFSS path. And now that I've got that, I can create a job definition based on this jar. So if I go into the develop tab and click the add button and create a new Spark job definition, it defaults to a Scala based job. So I can just paste in the path to the jar that I just copied. And as you can tell it the full name of the class that defines my entry point. And I also need to tell it which Spark pool it's going to run on. So I'll select the small pool I created earlier. This is only going to need one executor to run. And now that I've done this, I can test the job by clicking on the submit button. So this will send it off to the Spark pool. Now the Spark pool wasn't actually running. I created it earlier, but I hadn't yet given it any work to do. This will cause it to start running that cluster for me. And I can go and look at the progress. If I go into the monitor tab over here and I look at the Apache Spark application section, there's the job that I just submitted. So this is the custom job that I've just defined running because I clicked the button. So if we take a look at it, it's still in a submitting state. So right now there's nothing to see because the Spark cluster hasn't got as far as doing anything. So there's no log output, there's no activity output. But if through the magic of video editing, we speed this up a little bit, then we can skip straight to the end. And you can see that we've got some representation of the work that was done here in the top half and then the bottom half shows me my log output. Let's just resize things a little bit and now let's take a look at the standard output from my job and you can see that there's the hello world message that it prints immediately after it runs and then the output of its approximation, a very rough approximation, to pi that it created by running an interesting algorithm inside of Spark. And you can see at the top half here that the portal has shown me some information about the work that was done. Obviously this wasn't a terribly complicated or onerous task, so it's not done a huge amount of work, but for a more complex job, you'd see more information here. But this shows that I was able to write a class in Scala, upload the jar into this Azure Synapse environment, and run it on a hosted Spark pool. And there we go. I hope you found that useful.